Hey everyone, AmtrakGuy365 here, and today on this edition of Engines of Amtrak, I'll be discussing the EMD GP40TC. Amtrak since its inception in 1971 up to 1988 had been using a hodgepodge of locomotives for use in maintenance, switching, and backup power service. Some examples were the GP7 and GP9, SW1 and SW1200, and RS3. While serviceable for Amtrak's needs, they weren't meant to last forever so a change was in order. Amtrak was also in need of new locomotives with head-end power as new F40PHs still continued to roll in. An answer to Amtrak's power needs came about in 1988 from neighboring Canada, but with that said, I think I need a qualified Canadian to introduce this locomotive for me. He hails from Manitoba, is quite the Sonic the Hedgehog aficionado, and he created the popular series, Engines of Amtrak. The other Engines of Amtrak, his name? The Winnipeg Railfan. Hey guys, this is the Winnipeg Railfan here, and I've successfully taken over Jared's YouTube channel. Yay! Now you can expect Crashes in Trains 12 Part 5, Engines of New York Central, and all those other goodies that were cancelled. But now they're not, because I'm, I'm running this channel now. Ordinarily, this is where I'd introduce some stupid locomotive not related to Amtrak at all, like, say, the New York Central GP20, but I've agreed to abide by certain restrictions. Anyway, upon Government of Ontario Transit, or GO Transit's creation in May 1967, it was decided for motive power to convert already successful freight locomotives into passenger specifications. This was in the case the commuter system failed, and then the equipment could be sold off more easily. One locomotive GO used early on was the GP40TC. They were built by General Motors Diesel at the GMD plant in London, Ontario between 1966 and 1968. These locomotives were clearly based on the rather successful freight diesel the EMD GP40, which had been in production since 1965. Regarding technical specifications, the GP stands for General Purpose Locomotive, 40 for the series number, and TC for Toronto Commuter. They were rated for a top speed of 77 miles per hour, being powered by an EMD 645E 16-cylinder engine, producing 3,000 horsepower. They weighed in at a lean 264,000 pounds. It came in at a length of 62 feet 8 inches, a width of 10 feet 4 inches, and a height of 14 feet 6 inches. They were equipped with head-end power utilizing a 500 kilowatt EMD 12V-149 engine and generator. The units also came equipped with Nathan K3H air horns. Compared to their freight counterparts, they stand 3 feet longer due to the need for head-end power and were built using an SD40 shell. Their noses are also much stouter, being 60 inches instead of the standard 81 inches. GO's order arrived months before passenger service began, and in the meantime, they were operated by Kennedy National in freight service. Eight units were built between 1966 and 1968, being numbered 600 to 607. While the units did prove well for GO's need of speedy commuter trains, they did have a couple of issues. One of those being the HEP generator created a shrill whining noise. This annoyed the residents of communities near the railroad's Willowbrook yard, and to fix this, GO installed line-side power, allowing them to shut down the HEP generators during layovers. The second issue was the HEP generator was in a relatively cramped space, making maintenance difficult. As time went on into 1975 though, GO had the HEP system rebuilt and extended to the rear edge of the frame, thus eliminating any way to walk around the engine on the walkway. That same year, the units were renumbered as units 500 to 507. Well I guess that's it for my little appearance on this episode of Engines of Amtrak. Thanks Amtrak Guy for having me on, and I, along with everyone else watching this channel, looks forward to another episode of the Marysville Railroad Stories. Don't forget to subscribe to the Winnipeg Rail Fan. Alright, that's enough. Good night, girl. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, right. Thank you to the Winnipeg Rail Fan for helping to introduce this locomotive. 
By 1988, Go Transit was looking for a more modern and economical locomotive to replace their aging fleet. That answer was the F59PH. As the locomotive was rolled into service that year, the GP40TCs were sold off to Amtrak. Under their ownership, they were renumbered to 192 through 199, and Amtrak shortened the long hood of the locomotive so crews could walk around the rear of the engine body. Additionally, Amtrak fitted a sizable piece of sheet metal bearing the railroad's name to the front of the locomotives. Also on the front, towards the left side of the nose on the units, a cab signaling box was added. The units were also equipped with Nathan K5 LA air horns. Initial service involved being placed on short haul corridor trains and acting as backup or helper power on various trains. Into the early 90s, more specifically 1991, Amtrak leased 11 GP40s from Helm Leasing. These were numbered 650 to 664 and were re-geared for higher speed running. The downside though was they lacked head end power but were able to pass it through to the coaches from an F40PH or GP40TC. Amtrak's reasoning for these temporary units was to fill a brief power shortage brought on while waiting for GE's then new P32-8 BWH locomotive to be delivered. While in service, the GP40s trailed on trains or occasionally used in work train service. They'd be returned to Helm Leasing in the late 90s as the new Dash 8s and Genesis locomotives rolled in. By this point, Amtrak had started putting the TCs onto work trains and using them in switching operations as well. They also started to appear more frequently in the northeastern part of the U.S. A couple of years later, into August 1998 at Wilmington, Delaware, GP40 TC number 199 was rebuilt into work train specifications. This involved a new turbocharger, ditch lights, and a new cab signal unit. The front nameplate was also removed. Other units would get similar treatment in the coming months and years, while 195 was, for a time, assigned to the Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas area to switch express boxcars. These units were now being designated the GP40PH. Also in 1998, Amtrak acquired five rebuilt EMD GP38-3s for work train and switching duties. These notably featured a gray and black scheme. Moving on to the 21st century, Amtrak's GP40PHs were renumbered to 520 to 527. This was to accommodate the arrival of new P42DCs. Into June of 2004, Norfolk Southern was contracted out by Amtrak to rebuild all eight of their GP40PHs. NS would rebuild the units at their Juniata shops in Altoona, Pennsylvania, and they'd be designated the GP38-H3. Modifications included replacing the turbos with blowers resulting in 2,000 horsepower from the previous 3,000, along with upgrading the head-end power system and painting the units into Phase 5. The locomotive's designation came about from the 38 being the series number after the horsepower reduction, the H standing for head-end power as the units would retain it, and 3 denoting it was the third variation of its kind. These new units would begin service primarily on northeastern work trains and switching jobs in late 2004 and throughout 2005. They also acted as backup power in case power was unavailable or failed on a nearby train. From there on out, Amtrak's GP40TCs continue to do what they do best, and allow Amtrak to keep their northeastern rail network up to snuff. After over 50 years of being on the rails, it's safe to say that Amtrak's Canadian Jeeps will continue to leave their mark in the history book of Amtrak, the National Railroad Passenger Corporation. Thanks for watching this episode of Engines of Amtrak. Thanks to everyone who submitted photos, videos, and information for this episode as well. Anyway, stay tuned for next time when I rediscuss the fan favorite EMD F40PH. I hope you all enjoyed, and thank you again for watching.